you, Irene, and a warm welcome to you all. Good afternoon. Uh, after that very exciting presentation from GAP, it's quite hard to follow with uh, you know hardcore data, but I'll try my best. Um, so the topic of my presentation is really the tipping point, and there's quite a simple reason why I've titled it that way. How many of you all have read this book uh, by Malcolm Gladwell? Great. Um, definitely Malcolm Gladwell, very, very, a great author, very nice books, talks about um, ecology, consumer behavior, etc. So in this book, Malcolm Gladwell really defines the tipping point as a series of small changes that leads to one big significant change. And we really believe that consumers are at that digital tipping point. More consumers have digital devices uh, and consume digital content than ever before. And this has achieved such significant momentum that it is no longer simply a trend. It's actually a mainstream movement. The question is, how are marketers reacting to this sort of mainstream movement, and are they following their consumers online? So my agenda today is threefold, and most of it is based off data that we collected over the past four months through some research projects. Uh, we asked, we tried to understand consumer behavior online for telecom products and consumer electronics products. And a lot, of, a lot of the data is based on that research. So I'm going to start off with the first point, which is simply that consumers spend more time online today than offline during their product research process. It's a very simple point, but I'll try to prove it through a lot of data, hopefully, in the next few slides. So Singapore is a very tech-savvy market, as we all know. I mean, for smartphone penetration at over 60%. A lot of people have most gadgets, like, uh, as you know, phones, printers, cameras, TV, uh, tablets, and laptops. And these are the product categories that we covered as part of our research. Now, people consume these products or purchase these products uh, for different reasons. And the reason they purchase these products are, are varied. Uh, usually, it's to sort of upgrade to a new product, for, to find new features. Maybe their friends have a certain product that they want, etc. But one specific fact that we found through the research was triggers for smartphone and tablet. If you see, 36% actually said that they were triggered by an advertisement to go and re look at a, a smartphone or a tablet. And that's a huge shift from where we'll come like maybe four years back. The top choice, of course, is they wanted to upgrade. But the number two choice was they actually saw an advert. It really shows how consumers are aware of advertising and are taking actionable steps going ahead and sort of going to research these products. Of the 36% that actually uh, saw an advert, what's interesting and most startling is that 54% said that they actually saw the advert on the internet. And that's, that's a massive number. And that's equal to a newspaper article or advert, right? If you can see, television is at 35%, which is much lower down the order. And who would have thought that people are actually reacting to an internet advert compared to an other non-online, uh, non sort of offline media advertisement? So these are the sort of changes that we're seeing in the environment. It's clearly a result of people spending more time online. And as a result, being aware of the ads that they're seeing online and the messaging that they're seeing online. So Singaporeans are definitely an aware bunch. They sort of uh, take. Uh, they're cognizant of the advertising around them. And we, we noticed that 50% actually recalled online ads for consumer electronics products. That's, again, a huge, massive number. The specific question we asked them was, have you noticed any ads for the following products online? For TV, it was 42%. For laptops, 61%. Cameras, 56%. And printers was 50%. These are all massive numbers more than 50% actually recall an ad online. So broadly, 91% actually pay attention to at least one offline ad. So this could be outdoor media, this could be TV, print, radio, et cetera. And like, as Julian mentioned this number actually in his speech as well. So they actually pay attention to an offline ad. But what's more interesting is what they do after looking at the ad offline. 79% actually go online to learn more about the product. Not in this, in the manner that this woman is doing exactly, but in a more human manner. But um, so 79% actually go online to research about the product. Where do they go online to research more? Clearly, search engines seem like the gateway to the internet. So 
62% actually went to a search engine after looking at an ad offline, sort of research more about the product. So search really becoming this hub between your offline and your online world and where you want to go later after that. You can see that uh, a number of the other sources are mentioned below. So manufacturer sites are pretty common, blogs, tech news websites, etc. So search engines seem like the most popular online source to start the research process, right? And so uh, another interesting fact was 98% actually said that they would use one online uh, source to actually go and research about the product that they want to purchase. What's also interesting is YouTube. So one third said that they want to use YouTube as part of their product research process. These days it's quite common. So if there's a new smartphone or a, tablo a tablet that's released. People go to YouTube to sort of kind of try to see what the product looks like. There's the unboxing of the product that happens. A lot of bloggers uh, sort of review the product, et cetera. So it's very popular these days. So consumers are spending a lot of time online. So let's put that in perspective with some offline media as well. So on the left, you see all the online and offline media that they plan to use during the research process. And you can see the top three sources that they plan to use in that, in that uh, list. What's interesting is the amount of research time that they plan to use on these sources. Almost half of their total research time, they, they plan to use almost half of the research time on these just these three sources, which is search engine results, manufacturer sites, and tech blogs and review sites. And a long tail follows afterward. We also ask them how, how often they plan to use these sources. So on average, for example, during their product research process for smartphones, which is usually maybe 10 weeks, people told they, that they you plan to use a search engine result 8.1 times during that process. And this is really valuable, valuable data for marketers. We also ask them how influential they find you know, all these sources. And quite uh, naturally, 57% told us that they find tech blogs and review sites quite influential. It's primarily, of course, because of the independent opinion bloggers and review sites provide. So clearly, you can see the main takeaway from the slide being people spending almost half their research time on just three sources, but marketers are need to sort of realize where people are spending their time online. So we know that consumers are spending their time online, like I mentioned. But consumers spend their time online on various sources for different purposes. So for example, I've listed a few uh, reasons here. So get friends' opinions. They want to compare products and prices. They want to understand more about brands, et cetera. So people consider these four sources as sources where they want to find out more about brands and compare products. So search engine results, manufacturer sites, tech news websites, et cetera. They use YouTube to understand more through video. They want to look at the product uh, through an image or a video and understand more about the product. Banner adverts, text adverts, they use to find out about the latest deals. So uh, it's interesting to see how customers, what customers expect through these text and banner adverts. They expect that brands publish their latest deals, latest product uh, through these text and banner adverts. And finally, social, of course. People are asking their friends and family for opinions through Facebook or Twitter, et cetera. So you can see that this gives you a well-rounded view of why people use different products in their whole mix while doing product research. And coming back to social, it's interesting to see what people do after they receive opinion, an opinion from their friends or family. So we ask them that question. What do you do after you see receive an opinion on a product or service from your friend? And not surprisingly, actually 20, 28% said they go back to a search engine to do a search and validate that opinion that they received. So as you can see, it's really an intercomplex web of people sort of trying to understand more about the product through various sources online as well as offline. And taking that into consideration you know, makes a lot of sense. So what really is the impact of having that brand message online? And we asked customers to sort of tell us whether they like the brand slightly more, somewhat more, or much more based on these parameters. So clearly, we, most of us are price conscious. So if, if the brand promoted a good price on their ad, 46% said that they like the brand much more. What was interesting is people said that if it really appeared at the top of their search page, which is usually uh, the top three ad positions or the search results, they liked the brand much more. 24% actually told us that they brand, liked the brand much more. So it really validates how people like convenience. So they like to go to a search result. They like to see something really on top and quickly go and research more about the product. 
one in three consumer electronics consumers actually stated that search ads were relevant and useful. Very uh, nice fact again about consumer electronics products. So it's interesting to find out what they do after they look at all these ads. Do they actually take an action? Do they go to a store? Do they find out more? What do they do? So 89% actually took some form of action after looking at an ad online. And these are some examples. So 38% actually clicked on the ad on the internet. 37% compared the advertised brands with other choices. 37% stated that, that researching the brand online, they want to research the brand later online. And 28% kept the brand in mind later on while doing their research. So it's actually making an impact on how they think about their brand decision or product decision. That re really leads well into my second part, which is online leading to offline sales. And it, that's really is the holy grail usually. Uh, I mean, you want to know whether your online ad is lead, leading people to go to a store to purchase a product, etc. I'm going to show you a quick video uh, which will explain this a little better. Marketers want to know, does online advertising influence in-store sales? We tested the impact of online ads with some of America's most well-known brands. Here's what we found. Quaker wanted to help reinvigorate sales and give consumers new, creative ways to enjoy oatmeal. They teamed up with Good Bite and Decca to create a home on YouTube, complete with videos from top food bloggers and a community recipe contest. Consumers who saw the ad bought 9% more Quaker oatmeal and 8% less private label. Here's another example. Manufacturers and retailers often rely on circulars to promote products and drive sales. HP wanted to apply and test this concept online. Google and HP developed a digital co-op campaign. When a search for certain computer-themed words was entered, an HP-branded page on retailers' websites appeared. By targeting qualified customers, HP saw a high return on investment. For every dollar HP spent on search media, $5.30 in sales was made. Proofpoints now connect online advertising to in-store action. Coming back to the point about online leading to offline, and that really is a nice example of how people are looking at online ads and going offline and purchasing. And the best way was to demonstrate that through a video. Now, we also asked a very pertinent question to consumers through the research that we conducted. What is the impact of actually not seeing an ad of a brand online? So would that impact their perception about a particular brand? In this particular data set, 37% of phone plan buyers actually said they would be less interested in the brand if not purchased, if they don't see the brand advertised online. That is the largest portion of that pie that you see there. That's a really staggering fact um, that it's very powerful to see that people actually expect a brand to be online and then you know, are not very impressed if the brand is not being advertised online. Now, the various reasons that they actually want to see a brand online are as follows. So the first one is that they actually are less likely to hear about great deals and discounts if they don't see the brand online. So 56% actually told us that they, don't, uh, they would like a brand less if they don't see, you know, because they don't see deals and discounts from the brand. A few other factors were that, were that the, you know, they would doubt the quality of the brand. Um, they would question whether the brand really wants you as a customer, et cetera. One other point was this, uh, at 48%, they were more likely to consider other brands that, did, that do advertise online. So it really goes to show that consumers express, uh, sorry, ex expect various things from brands, and they want to see brands advertise online. They, uh, they expect brands to be fresh these days. You know, if you're advertising online, obviously you're considered quite innovative, et cetera. Again, 73% of consumer electronic consumers said they feel more positive toward a brand after seeing it on the internet. So we asked them, how does seeing a brand, uh, an online ad, make you feel about brands? And these were some numbers we got out of them. 40% made them more interested in finding about the brand. 35% got them you know, interested in more deals and discounts, et cetera. So all this tying to one basic fact, uh, I mean, and that we don't realize very often, that consumers actually are used to seeing certain things online these days, and they're spending a lot of time there. So it actually makes sense to be thinking about how you're you know, following your consumers online. The last part of my presentation is really about the state of brands. And we, we're, we're kind of interested in trying to see what products people are picking in Singapore for these various products that we sort of sample. 
And we look at this in three parts. The first one is consumer electronics. So their TV brand preference. What brand do they currently own, and what is their brand preference? Not very surprising. Samsung seems to be on top. Samsung, Sony, Panasonic was their current brand. And LG making an, an, uh, an entry with 9% preference uh, for consumers in Singapore. So this was a very recent study, of course, done past four months. Consumers being expected to purchase products in the next six months, and very relevant information. For laptops, the story was a little different. Of course, we see Apple making a huge jump there. A lot of people uh, having Apple as their brand preference. Uh, HP is in second, and Acer sort of following uh, in that list. So uh, Apple really being the dark horse there in, in a matter of you know probably six months to a year. The last one in consumer electronics is imaging. So you s on the left, you see digital cameras. On, on the right, you see printers and scanners. Of course, Canon uh, is uh, the preferred brand for digital cameras. Uh, you see Sony and Nikon sort of exchanging positions for digital cameras. On the other hand, for printers and scanners, it's, a, it's extremely interesting to see how HP and Canon are sort of playing this game. Uh, Canon clearly being the preferred brand for a lot of consumers over the next six months, and something that you know, both brands can think about going forward. Next is smartphone and tablets. So we listed the brands and asked people what their current cho top choice was and what their preferred brand was. On average, they picked 2.1 brands. And of course, the top one was Apple. And it's also interesting to see how people are considering a lot of the other brands. So you see Samsung, HTC, BlackBerry, Nokia, et cetera, and a lot of the other brands in that, in that chart. The tablet story was a little different. Of course, Apple completely sort of um, you know, garners a lot of the market share there. But interesting to see how people are considering Samsung, the Samsung Galaxy Tab as one of their main you know, other products that they would want to survey. We also asked them about loyalty. So what is the current brand that they own, and then what brand did they want to purchase if they want to purchase another product? So you can see that the iPhone number went down. So people are actually considering a lot of the other products. So the loyal iPhone users are actually thinking of a lot of the other you know, uh, smartphone brands in the market. Uh, the story for tablets is a little different. Of course, uh, iPad owners are quite loyal. They plan to stick to their tablet. They're pretty happy with it. And it's quite a strong you know, fight in the tablet market. Of course, this doesn't include the Amazon Kindle Fire, probably, which, is, uh, which has made quite a splash recently and uh, you know, uh, is probably proving to be the most relevant uh, competitor to the iPad. Last one is on telecom. And this is, again, interesting. So we did this for prepaid and postpaid plans. And the scenario was a little different. Prepaid, Starhub was seen to be the preferred uh, sort of top choice at 18%, as you can see there. Singtel at 16 and M1 was at 11%. But a brand that they're considering, Singtel, seemed to score high. So Singtel definitely is a brand on their choice menu for consumers. For postpaid plans, it was a little different. Singtel, definitely the top choice, Starhub and M1. Uh, and actually ahead of Star One in that regard. So it's a little different, uh, not normally that you expect. Again, what, what we did was to try and understand loyalty. And as you can see, um, Singta, uh, I mean, you can see loyalty across the three brands. It seems like Starhub uh, users are more loyal to their brand. So 43% of Starhub repeat customers consider Starhub to be their top choice, compared to 36% of Singtel or 27% of M1. Postpaid was quite a, a normal sort of scenario. 29% uh, of Singtel customers consider Singtel to be their top choice and greater than Starhub or M1. So very nice way to see how these three brands are, brands are playing out in Singapore in the telecom market. And just to you know, keep, be aware of what the main competitive threat is. So I want to end with just the key takeaways. Um, of course, coming back to the point about consumers spending more time online than anywhere else uh, in their product research process. Search is really the kind of hub between your online and your offline world, and where people really go first to sort of research about uh, something that they want to find out. Uh, online advertising is actually as effective as any other media, as you can see. So people are recalling more of these online ads and then taking relevant sort of uh, actions after looking at any of these online ads. And lastly, you know, they perceive brands that advertise online as innovative, fresh, and you know, um, 
and right, you know, playing the game right. So it really is up to marketers to think about how they want to reach their audience online by advertising accordingly. So that was it from me. Um, thank you. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take them. So uh, just to clarify a question, you want to understand how you should plan uh, during if you're planning a campaign online versus offline. Is that your question, or I'm not sure if I got it right? Uh, yeah, you're talking about how online can help reduce uh, offline sales. sales. Yes, yes. Uh, coming from a company with uh, two main sales procurement routes, okay. online and offline. So and where offline predominantly we use print ads. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I would actually, um, so Wes talked a lot about this sort of attribution, right? And how you want to sort of balance your portfolio in terms of your marketing mix. That, I mean, and that, that, that's really the holy grail. Again, uh, I'd go back to the point about, you know, uh, marketers wanting to find out how much they should spend online or on offline, which leads to offline sales. So it really is going back to tie, it's, it's tying all the threads together. You want to find out the right attribution what, how much you should be spending online, which leads to offline sales, and offline leading to offline as well. Um, I don't have a case study, but I think uh, if you might want to check with Wes, I think he might have better insights into something of that sort. Yeah, so, um, yes. Yes. So, it, you know, there are a lot of factors involved, of course. First of all, yes, sorry. Uh, so, she's, uh, so, there was a particular statistic that said 89% actually go on and go and take some action after looking at an ad. And out of that, 37% actually clicked on the ad. So, she's asking me whether that's a relevant measure because, you know, you don't really see that sort of click through rate. So, uh, I mean, there are various factors involved. So it depends on what you're trying to advertise your campaigns. Different campaigns have different click-through rates. Different products have different click-through rates, et cetera. And this is really a survey. So it was uh, a general survey that also matters, right? When you're talking about a large segment like showing a million impressions, it really, it, it really would be quite, quite a bit different. Um, this is purely a survey that we conducted and uh, really based on how consumers behave if they see an ad. Any other point? Yeah, and frankly, if you're selling, which company you're representing? HP printers. So if you're selling a printer for 50 cents, I'm sure you have 100% click through rate. I'm quite sure of that. So it really depends on whether you're selling a tactical campaign, how it's set up. But we've seen as high as 50% click through rate for some campaigns. <laughs> no. Oh, you're. No, no, no. So, no. So that was actually all ads, online ads. It, it wasn't it, on ads displayed. I think I think you miss uh, took that. So it was on all ads online, basically. Yeah, of course. So display click through rates are a little lesser, of course. Uh, but that that statistic was overall online ads. It wasn't for search or display, etc. So it's a very general statistic. Yeah. Wait one second. Uh, <laughs> let's go back. Uh, which one? Yeah, this is all advertising on the internet. 
search, display, whatever, everything, YouTube, everything. Yeah. Yes. No, of course. Uh, Of the, so it's 38% of the 89%, right? Yeah. No, so I agree. As in, so of course, there's a difference in an actual survey and, I mean, a larger sample set that you see in terms of impressions. Sure. Sure. I mean, I guess all this data really goes back to the point about people starting to be more aware of these ads and actually clicking on them. So we have seen click-through rates increase over the years. It might not be at the level that we probably expect, but uh, as, a, as a fact, click-through rates have increased over the past three, four years. And I mean, this stat might not represent actually what you see in your campaign, but I still believe that you know uh, various campaigns have various click-through rates. You can't really generalize a click-through rate. This was purely a very mass audience sort of base survey that we conducted. Right. Any other questions or yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Yeah, so what they do usually they establish OK, yeah, just to repeat her question. So the video that I showed had uh, us measuring how Quaker sort of increased their sales offline based on online, et cetera. So she's asking what the methodology is. And usually what they do is they establish a base sales for five cities, and uh, for about 10 cities, and sort of show the ad in one place and do not show the ad in the other five cities. And sort of over that base sales, they measure uplift, how much more sales has been done in those five cities. OK. Yeah. Right. That's a good question. But uh, I think, but in that particular example, I think it was measured for YouTube specifically. Yeah. Oh, how? I mean, it's a it's a very simple. Uh, so, I'll have to check back to be honest. Uh, I don't know the exact. Uh, I mean, in general, that's how they do it. They establish base sales, etc., for these cities. But uh, for sure, I can check back and uh, let you know. How that